Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this episode with me, your host, Dallin Haas. And today, we're going to talk about how to get your money early out of the TSP. And this is huge, 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 huge. Because every year, it seems, I talk with more and more federal employees who are looking to retire early. They want to be done as soon as they can to enjoy a different stage of life, whether it is actually to retire or maybe to start their own business, to do something different. They want to know what the ramifications and the things that they should know when it comes to, okay, I want to leave potentially early from the federal government. What do I need to do to make sure that I can have access to my TSP funds without penalty, okay? Because we know that the TSP and IRAs and 401ks, they are a great way to save for your retirement because they have tax benefits, right? If you save into the, the traditional TSP, then you get tax benefits today. Basically, you pay te- less taxes today. If you put money into the Roth TSP, then you, then you pay taxes today, so you actually pay a little more today, but you pay less later, right? So there's incredible tax benefits in using these accounts, right? But as you know, there are a lot of rules and stipulations that come so that you use these accounts in the way that the government intended them to be used, which is for retirement, right? And that is why there is a very well-known rule called the Rule of 59 and a half, right? Where basically for many, many different types of retirement accounts, you have to wait till age 59 and a half to start taking money out of these accounts to not have what they call just the 10% penalty on the withdrawal, right? So for example, if you take out money and you don't have an exception to this rule and you're under 59 and a half, then whatever amount you take out, you're gonna pay a 10% of that in a penalty to the IRS, which we don't want. That's something we definitely don't want. And that is above and beyond taxes, right? Even after 59 and a half or before, if money is coming out of the traditional TSP or a traditional IRA, most often than not, taxes are going to be due on that money as well, okay? This 10% penalty is separate from that, okay? But today, I wanna go over some of the things that you should know and ways that you can get money out of the TSP before 59 and a half and not pay this 10% penalty so that you can potentially retire early and have the money that you need from the TSP or even maybe you're retiring at your minimum retirement age, right? 57 or whatever it is for you and you are not quite 59 and a half and you wanna make sure you can get money out without penalty, okay? So without further ado, we're gonna jump right in. And the first and simplest way that you can do this, that you can get money out of the TSP before 59 and a half without penalty is what they call the rule of 55, okay? And this rule basically says, hey, if you retire in the year that you turn age 55 or later, then you can actually access your TSP without penalty. It's a great, great rule, very, very simple. Basically, for example, let's say this year, in 2021, if you're listening or watching this right when it's published. In 2021, let's say you're turning 55 in this year, anytime during the year, and you're also retiring this year, right? Anytime during this year. Then you would be able to access your TSP without penalty, without that 10% penalty, which is a great, great thing, okay? Now, let's actually back it up one year. Let's say you're actually turning 54 this year and retiring. And some people might think that, okay, I'm retiring, I'm 54, so I'll be able to access my TSP next year at age 55. And if you assume that, you'd actually be wrong. So how it works is, if you are not in the year that you turn 55 when you leave service as a federal employee, right, then you actually have to wait all the way until 59 and a half. So for example, if you retire and you're 54, and you're turning, you turn 54 in the year that you retire, then you have to wait until 59 and a half before you can access your TSP without penalties. You you can't just wait till 55, right? If you retire before the year you turn 55, then you gotta make it all the way to age 59 and a half. It's kind of a weird rule, but that is how it is structured. That's huge in understanding that little nuance when planning for retirement and trying to get money out of these accounts, okay? Now, For you special provision employees, those firefighters, air traffic controllers, law enforcement, you folks, the rule is a little different, 
okay? You can actually access your TSP without penalty if you retire in the year that you turn age 50 or later. So you have five extra years where you can take it out early assuming you retire in the year you turn 50 or later, okay? So that's a, a small nuance for special provisions employees, okay? Now, one big mistake that I see all the time is let's say someone is retiring at their MRA, their minimum retirement age, let's say it's 57, okay? Let's say they retire at 57 and say, hey, I actually there, there's actually a ton of advantages to an IRA in retirement, so I'm gonna move my TSP into an IRA, right? Well, what did they just do? Well, they retired at 57, so they would be able to access their TSP without penalty, right? But an IRA actually doesn't have those same rules. They, an IRA kit does not allow you to access your TSP at 55 or age 50, right? Those rules don't exist for an IRA. So by moving your money from a TSP to an IRA early before 59 and a half, it actually limits where you can take money out of, right? Where in the TSP you would be able to access it before 59 and a half without, ten, without a penalty, but in an IRA you would not, right? So basically, either you wait till 59 and a half before you make the rollover, or you roll over everything that you're not gonna need until then. You know, for example, let's say you're 57. You say, hey, I really like the advantages of an IRA. I'm gonna roll over everything that I can or don't need in the next two and a half years, right? Some way, that's one strategy to kind of get around this little rule, right? Something to know so that when you start moving money around in retirement, you know the rules that come along with it. Now, let's say maybe you're retiring before age 55 or age 50 for the special provisions, or maybe you don't qualify for whatever reason, you may want to access your TSP or an IRA early, before 59 and a half, and you really don't want to have to pay that penalty if possible. Now, there is actually one more option, and it is called an SEPP, or a Substantially Equal Periodic Payment. Okay, that's a long name, but if you Google SEPP, it'll come right up, okay? So that's substantially equal periodic payment, okay? So basically what this is, the IRS says, hey, if you take out a certain amount of money from your TSP or an IRA, the, the SCPP actually um, works for both of them, the TSP and an IRA. So if you take out a certain amount from your retirement accounts consistently for five years or until 59 and a half, whichever comes later, okay, then the IRS will allow you to take that money out without penalty, okay, and it gets a little messy, okay, so I'm not going to go super deep here, but I wanted to introduce this idea to you so that you at least know about it and you can do more research if you think it applies to you. So, for example, because the rule says, hey, you have to wait at least five years or 59 and a half, so for example, let's say you're 50 and you start the SEPPs. Basically, you're gonna to have to take a certain amount from your TSP or an IRA, whichever one you're doing it for, for Intel 59 and a half, because that one comes later than five years, right? But let's say you're 58. Let's say you're 58 and you start this, where you're gonna to have to do it for five years, which is actually going to end after 59 and a half, right? So, let me kind of give you an idea of what it might look like. There's three different ways that you can calculate the amount that you would have to take out from these accounts, okay? There's a annuitization method, there's an amortization method, and then there's a required minimum distribution method. There's three different methods, and they all calculate a different amount, right? And there's actually gonna be a link, I always write an article, um, most of the time, with every podcast and um, YouTube video that I do. So look in the description, there's gonna be a link to that article, and in that article, there's going to be a link to a calculator that Bankrate, the, the website has, that you can actually calculate, you can do some estimates for what these different methods are gonna to come to, right? If you did them based on how much money you have in your TSP and things like that, what it would require you to take out. And some methods actually have you taken out more, and some methods have you taken out less. So depending on how much you need and when, it may change which option you pick. Again, I'm not gonna go into the nitty nitty gritty of each detail exactly what it looks like, but I wanted to introduce it to you so that you know the option is available and that you could do more research and you can figure out, hey, does this make sense for me, right? 
But let me, let me kind of add some caution here. First of all, accessing your TSP too early, too fast can be dangerous, right? Because you want your money to last throughout retirement and every dollar you take out early can be very, very detrimental. That's why I often tell people not to use a TSP loan if possible. Sometimes it makes a lot of sense, but sometimes it's just going to hurt their long-term retirement because they took a lot out early on and did not have time to grow. Right? That's the first thing. Second thing that I always say when it comes to talking about these strategies is you want to make sure you know what you're getting into before you start a SCPP, right? Or substantially equal periodic payment. Because if you make a mistake, if you do something a little wrong, then the IRS can can make it so that all the withdrawals that you made before 59 and a half are subject to that 10% penalty right? Which can add up to thousands of dollars very, very, very quickly, right? And so the cost of a mistake can be very, very high. So I always recommend talking to a finance pro, a tax pro, someone that knows this stuff and that can walk you through it to make sure that you do it correctly. I always recommend that, right? But again, do your research, find out if this makes sense for you. So, those are some of the main ways that you as a federal employee can access your TSP or an IRA in some cases before 59 and a half, right? Because many of you are simply retiring before 59 and a half. And if you're retiring after, after 59 and a half, that's great too. There's just less things to think about, which simplicity is amazing and not having to deal with these different nuances is a great thing. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, put in the comments below. I try to get back to them as much as I possibly can. Again, if you have any questions, there's a link in the description below that I cover on my weekly Q&A. Feel free to submit it there. I hope you have an incredible week, and I'll see you next time.